Welcome to Reread, where I have a mic. Let's see if it works. All right, folks, we are on Karen Travis's Order 66. Hooray! All right, where do I start with this book? Well, it wasn't very good. Of course, you should know this by now. I still, even giving it a second shot, I still don't like the Republic Commando series. Several reasons. Have you noticed how Darman is less interesting ever since he's been involved in, with Etain? I, I, I just found that interesting. Like He's probably the most boring clone trooper to read about. He's always, you know, he wanders around the entire novel like an idiot. He doesn't know what's going on. Uh, this is the book where Etain finally comes clean and says, you have a son and you've had one for over a year now and you held him in his arms and I didn't even tell you. And instead of getting mad or angry, he just walks away. And he gets mad at his superior because uh, Skarita was the one that, and it's true, he was the one that said, no, Etain, don't tell him. You can't tell the kid. And so he beats up his father, right? Because that's uh, this, his, his commander's like a father to him. He beats him up, and he feels better, and e, he and Etain are okay, and he can see his son now. Uh, no, Etain, you're a general in the Republic Army. You're a Jedi Knight and thereby outrank him, and you didn't say anything for a whole year? Screw you. That's what Darman should be saying. But, of course, it's in a perfect world here where Etain gets away with everything and gets no hate put toward her. And, of course, he can't hate her because something's going to happen later on. But that is way later in this book. Um, his son is one year old. They call him, even though his name was Vinku, when Darman makes the, I think it's in True Colors, he said, oh, if I have a son, I always thought I'd call him Cad. So now they call him Cad. I guess Vinku is just out the door. Even though she does say, well, I named him Vinku, but we call him Cad because you always like that name. Gee, thanks, I didn't even get to name my own kid. You're just calling him by a made-up name, even though his real name is Vinku. What kind of a name is Vinku, either. Um, he does have a little bit of the Force in him. So they're trying to hide that because she doesn't want the Jedi to kidnap him and take him away because that's what Jedi do. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, that goes in the face of everything because they've had this discussion before. Um, yes, they do take the children, but they check with the parents. I mean, every instance we've seen in the expanded universe, even Mace explains this. It's like, no, these parents want us to have their children. You know, they know they have a better life here. We're not kidnapping them. And, and such. You know, yeah, sure we want them. We need to bolster our ranks, but at the same time, it's the parent's decision. And here, Karen Travis says, you know what? I don't read the EU, so I'm just going to make up my own narrative here for uh, Etain. Uh, I, I forgot about this, but there's like a page or two where she talks to Callista, and I was like, oh, look at that. And of course, you know, Karen Travis wrote that other book, so she knows about Callista's order, but she's okay. Well, maybe Etain wants to join that order, you know, where they can have loved ones and they can have childrens and uh, children and family and stuff. But that that's only there for like two pages, and then they move on. Uh, just that Etain has an out. She wants out of the Jedi Order once the Clone Wars are over. I forgot to mention another thing. When Etain tells Darman about the child, he went, "Am I the last person in the squad to find out?" She goes, "No," and I'm like, y "Yes, he was." Everyone knew, like when he was holding the baby in his arms in true colors, the entire squad was kind of sad because they knew it was his son, but he wasn't supposed to know. Now, sure, not everyone in the squad, but most people did. So e is just full of lies. Full of lies. Uh, there's a story in here where they go looking for uh, Skarata's daughter, which you don't care about. Um, I, I, another one I totally forgot here, Arla Fett. Jango Fett's sister, who just comes out of nowhere, and I hate when they do this. If you haven't established Arla Fett very early on in Jango Fett's life, don't make up someone related to him, like a sister and the fan. Been long, they explain where she's been and why, you know, why Jango maybe not even knew she was alive anymore, and that's why he didn't talk about her. And still, though, really, really awful stuff. Um, there's a lot of other things here. That, uh, there's one cool thing I did like. Uh, the battle on Kashyyyk, the Wookiees battling the Separatist droids, the description of that. It lasted only a couple of pages, but it was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Wookiees ripping arms off and everything and going kind of berserk in their little 
bloodlust rage, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, she has quotes from Palpatine. There's quotes at the beginning of every book, but there's a chapter, excuse me, but there's two quotes from Palpatine that sound nothing like Palpatine. I don't even know if she, she doesn't feel, I don't, I don't feel like she knows how to write him. And so some of the quotes he says, I cannot imagine the Emperor saying, you know, it just doesn't sound like him. But uh, anyway, uh, Order 66, which is the title of the book, is only in the last 80 pages. I mean, that's kind of awful. And I was thinking about it. I know it says Republic Commando Order 66, but that Order 66 is very prominent because they want the average, you know, Star Wars fan to look at it and go, ooh, more about Order 66 from Episode 3? Let me read it. And they'd be so confused and so ticked off, too, because it's like 320 pages of nonsense. It, it, seriously, this book is like going in a car ride and being car sick, but just toughing it out because you know when you get to your final destination, you won't have to worry, you know, the car sickness will be over. That's what it felt like reading this book. It was so bad. When Order 66 is finally given, the clones are like, well, they, they treat it like it's optional. Like, do they want to kill Jedi? Maybe they'll turn a blind eye to some Jedi. Obviously, they don't want to kill Etain. They want to save her because she's their friend. I'm like, no, 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 no. In the entire EU, this is a chip, right? This is a programming. Uh, the Emperor says that earlier on when... In, in, in the comic book once, and then later on, uh, even Filoni's Clone Wars, I think a chip goes bad and the clones start shooting people up. Uh, they automatically turn on the Jedi. You can't tell me that all the other clones didn't have a conscience. And then automatically, without question, fired upon their general, their generals. You know, Cody, who's been with Obi-Wan forever, respects him, thinks, and they even say this in the book. He, uh, oh, Commander Cody thinks the sun revolves around, uh, Commander Cody thinks the sun revolves around Kenobi. He loves him, you know. Okay, but when he got the order, he shot him, right? He shot at him immediately. It's a programming thing. But they're like, like wow, that's a weird order to come through. Hmm, well, let's not shoot Jedi for right now. Let's say, no, no, you're clones. You're clones. You do as you're programmed to do. How hard is it to say that, you know, they're programmed. They have to, and I thought this would be, lead to a beautiful, this could have been a great story where now, he is going, determined to kill Etain. And maybe when he gets to pull the trigger, when he has her down, he, he struggles a little bit because that's the mother of his child. I mean, you could have really done something interesting here. A man against his programming, what he's been genetically coded to do. Can he? Can true love fight through? Yes, we can do something. No, but the entire clone squad, the entire clone squad is like, hmm, well, let's not kill Jedi for now. Let's focus on just rescuing Etain and getting her out of here. Because technically, technically, she's quit the Jedi now, so she's not a Jedi. Awful, awful. The only shining thing is Etain dies. Should I mention spoilers? I don't care. The book is like 20 years old, so <laughs> you should know by now. If you don't, oh well. Um, but it's terrible. It's ter like I said, it's like being car sick on a ride. That's what it felt like reading the whole thing. I'm not done with Karen Travis' Republic Commando series, sadly, but uh, I'm one more down and one closer to being done with it completely, and I cannot wait for that time to come. All right, folks. See you next time.